Alright, if you're a gamer, you've probably heard about the 8GB VRAM issue on the new 50 series of desktop GPUs. This guy's told you about it, and this guy's told you about it, and this guy. Basically, 8GB of VRAM is not enough to run modern games at 1440 at high settings without a performance hit. That's for graphically intensive titles. Even at 1080 resolution, some games require more than 8GB of VRAM. The big worry, of course, is not just for today's games, it's for tomorrow's. Most people want to keep their new GPU for several years. This issue, it's only going to get worse as games become more complex. Well, as laptop reviewers, the big question is, does it affect laptops? Should anyone be buying an expensive gaming laptop in 2025 with only 8GB of VRAM? In the laptop space, the GPUs with 8GB of VRAM are far less powerful, better suited for 1080 gaming than 1440. But on the other hand, a lot of gaming laptops only come with high-resolution displays. 2560 by 1600 is very common. If there are more pixels to render, then you need more VRAM. But here's the rub. It's hard to prove whether this is an issue on a laptop. There's no RTX 5060 Ti with both an 8GB and 16GB variant. But then it hit me. The Flow Z13. It has AMD Strix Halo processor. It combines a powerful CPU with a very powerful integrated GPU. It performs on par with a laptop with a lower wattage RTX 4060. On this device, you can configure how much memory the GPU gets. Now, it does use system memory, so it's not as fast as a GPU would have, but this comparison, guys, it's as good as we're going to get. Now, for our testing, we want to simulate how gamers will actually run games on a laptop with only 8GB of VRAM. These are laptops with an RTX 4060, 5060, 4070, and 5070. These are more mid-range performance laptops, and since we do want to run at 2560 by 1600 we're going to have to dial back the settings. The reason, by the way, that I want to run at this resolution is because, as I said, that's the resolution that most of these laptops come with. In fact, some 8GB VRAM laptops like the Predator Helios Neo 14 have an even higher resolution. Now, of course, you can just run games at 1080, and then force the image to be stretched over a higher resolution display. I don't like this, because the image, it can become blurry due to fractional scaling, and even stretched if there is a change in aspect ratio, or you get those black bars above and below the image. Quite frankly, gaming laptops with these GPUs are pretty pricey. This isn't something you should have to settle for. Now, to decide which settings to use, we ran most games on a variety, and just chose ones that averaged around 60 frames per second on 2560 by 1600 on an RTX 4060 laptop that feeds its GPU decent power. We chose the Asus TUF A14 as our RTX 4060 laptop. Its GPU can drop to 100 watts. This is not the most powerful 4060 laptop out there, there are bigger, more powerful ones, but it's in the top grouping. For example, the well-known Zephyrus, Zephyrus, I never know how to pronounce it, the G14, it only feeds its GPU 90 watts. We found medium to high settings in most games got you close to 60 FPS if we turned off bells and whistles like ray tracing and used upscaling. FSR on our AMD powered flow and DLSS on our TUF A14. Alright, so let's start by getting a baseline and comparing average FPS of our real RTX 4060 laptop with the Flow. This is with the Flow set to 8GB of graphics memory. What you'll notice is that the Flow, it lags a bit in most games, noticeably so in Black Myth, Dawn Trail and Space Marine 2, so keep this in mind when you see my next graphs that the GPU in the Flow is below the RTX 4060 in the TUF A14. By the way, you may be wondering why we didn't run at lower settings to get an average FPS above 60 at least consistently. The reason is that the 4060 is the slowest of the 8GB VRAM laptop GPUs. A 5060 or 5070 will get you higher frame rates. If we drop the settings to low, VRAM usage would be less. This means our results won't be as accurate for 2025 laptops with more powerful GPUs. Also, low settings, they tend to make games look a bit meh anyway. So let's now look at actual test results of 8GB vs 16. When looking at average FPS, there isn't a lot of difference. The only game that saw a big difference was Cyberpunk when run on high settings. That's with no FSR for upscaling. We did test this twice, by the way, as we thought the results looked odd. There was no change. On average, moving from 8GB to 16GB VRAM saw 2 FPS more, so initial results look like there's not a lot in it. But this is not the full story. Let's look at 1% lows. Here's where 8GB of VRAM noticeably becomes an issue. Look at Forza, almost double the frames on 16GB vs 8. Look at Cyberpunk, significantly higher frames on 16 without upscaling. Look at Monster Hunter on high with upscaling, significantly more frames. You need to step down to medium settings on Monster Hunter Wilds for it not to make a difference. At challenging parts of a game, 8GB of VRAM is an issue. Not in all games and not at all settings, but in quite a few. 
And I really can't stress enough how important 1% lows are. Say you're in a big fight with lots of effects going on and your frame rate suddenly drops. It's going to make your experience pretty miserable. Now, let's take a look at VRAM usage during our tests. No surprises, the games that saw big drops in 1% lows are the ones using more than 8 gb of VRAM. Forza Horizon at 9 gigs, Monster Hunter Wilds at over 12, on high settings that is, Cyberpunk on high settings also gets quite close to 8 gigs. If we look at frame time spikes on Monster Hunter Wilds where we are the most VRAM constrained, you can see significantly higher spikes on 8 gig than on 16, over 100 milliseconds. Finally. I want to show you how the real RTX 4060 in the Tough A14 performs against the Flow's AMD GPU, but this time when the Flow has 16 gig. Looking at average FPS, the Tough A14 consistently wins out, other than Cyberpunk on high. But average FPS wasn't the issue to begin with. On 1% lows, we see many examples where the less powerful GPU with 16 gig either catches up with the Tough or beats it. So let's wrap. Let's start with the answer to our main question. Is 8GB of VRAM a bottleneck on gaming laptops? Yes. If you're running a graphically intensive title, or you're running at settings that requires more than 8GB, it's an issue. And as you saw from our results, many popular games at common settings are going to hit this, even when using upscaling. And please keep in mind what I said earlier. Today's test was on a device that performs like a low-powered RTX 4060. On a full wattage 5060 or 5070, the bottleneck will be worse. On the 5070 in particular, you're going to want to run games at higher frame rates or perhaps even higher settings. The sudden drops in FPS, it's going to be even more noticeable. And of course, most people are going to keep their laptop for several years. Games they're only going to get more memory hungry, not less, like I said. But. Before we rule out 8GB VRAM laptops, I do want to say this. We feel when it comes to lower tier GPUs like the one in the Flow, stepping up to a more powerful GPU matters more than having more VRAM. You get higher average FPS even if you do see some sudden drops. Also on the Tough A14, we didn't see nearly as bad frame time lags as we did on the Flow when it was limited to 8GB. This may be due to the high VRAM speeds in the Tough. So here's where we land. If you can afford an RTX 5070 Ti laptop that has 12GB of VRAM, you should absolutely be getting that. Even so, games are starting to hit over 12 gigs as I showed you earlier with Monster Hunter Wilds. If you head to our Best Gaming Laptops list on our website, bestlaptop.deals, you can filter for 5070 Ti or 5080 laptops, the latter of which has 16GB of VRAM. You'll see all the laptops there that we recommend with those specific GPUs. You'll see their pros and cons, and we track their prices so you can buy at the best possible time. In fact, we just launched a feature to set a custom price drop notification. Now, if you're not in the USA, I promise you we hear you. We are laser focused on rolling out international support later in the year. Now, if you can't afford a 5070 Ti laptop though, then I'd ask yourself, do you need a 2560 by 1600 resolution display? A lower resolution 1921 will pair much better with an 8GB of VRAM GPU. Speaking personally though, I hate this resolution on a 16 inch or larger laptop. I sit close to my laptop screen and I find that 1920 by 1200 spread over 16 inches just lacks clarity. Small text to me, it looks fuzzy. If you're programming or doing data science where you're looking at small text all day, I would avoid this. However, if you're just gaming on your laptop, then that's what I'd get. That's if you can find a laptop by the way with that resolution. Many good gaming laptops, they just don't have it as an option anymore. Now, if neither of these two works for you, I'd just save your money and get a 5060 rather than a 5070. Then upgrade your laptop sooner when newer GPUs come out with more VRAM. I feel at this super early stage, a 5070 is going to be too VRAM constrained and not offer that much more than a 5060. But I don't know for sure, so we've ordered identical laptops with a 5060 and 5070 to test out if this theory holds true. YouTube disclaimer for the chin strokers. As always, gaming performance depends on many factors, such as do you have enough memory, how fast is your memory, how fast is the GPU and CPU, what games are you running, and the settings you're running them at. What's slowing down your game can be any number of these factors, so what I'm advising you here is more of a general guide. Anyway guys, if you want to see what we think of any laptop we've tested and which laptops we recommend for various use cases, head on over to our website, bestlaptop.deals. I'm off, we've got a ton of exciting new laptops to review, so till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.